This program is made possible by the loyal financial support of the friends and partners of Family Policy Institute. Good evening and welcome to Watchmen on the Wall. Thank you for joining us. Tonight we're outside the headquarters of Joy Magazine here in Somerset West in Cape Town. And later we're going to be talking to Erin Giorgio about the celebrations that marks the 100th edition of Joy Magazine in South Africa. We're also going to talk to Jackie Giorgio, who is the managing editor, and some of the staff about what they do to make this publication such a special ministry in South Africa. But before we speak to Edwin and the team, I want you to watch a powerful video that sums up where the church is and why this magazine is such an important resource to the Church of Jesus Christ.
Erin, that was a powerful and profound video. And I think it sums up where the world is today, and especially the Christian community. We've seen how many people are sharing their faith with other people. We've seen how many people actually have a biblical Christian worldview. And it talks about the importance, the vital nature of this ministry, Joy Magazine. As you celebrate 100 years, your main aim is to get the gospel of Jesus Christ and to teach people about biblical Christian worldview. Um, tell us how you started. What inspired you to start Joy Magazine? Okay, well, I think, Carol, it's important that you remember that Christians need a biblical worldview. Now, that's a terminology that we were privileged, both you and I, we came out of the same Bible school, and right. hence we took our faith into the marketplace, which is media. But not everybody has that opportunity, and they don't appropriate their faith in society. So they have a good theology, they, get, they have great faith, and they learn things, but they're just not sharing it. What we try to do with that short video clip that we've just watched is, is try and get across the message of what Joy Magazine does every single month. Just, just paint the picture. Take us back 10 years, how you started, what God was saying to you then. How the magazine actually started was, yes, Joy Magazine was around for about 20 years. Um, it was traditionally a charismatic magazine serving that market. Um, and it was owned by a big publishing house, Republican News Agency. They eventually they gave up the magazine and somebody did come in and try and reinvent it and make it a little bit more contemporary and a bit more trendy. But I don't think they really did a, a, a feasibility study and found out what does the market want. We don't just want a Christianized magazine. We wanted a Christian magazine. A biblical based ma magazine. And what Joy does is, you know, it started off there was an incident happened in Johannesburg with a, a, a young, between two Christian schools, very well-known schools, I won't name them, um, and the head boy of the one school started dating a young girl who used to go out with the head boy of another school. Anyway, he obviously was offended at this and um, he invited the, this couple over for a party at their house. They were very wealthy people. And when this young chap arrived with his girlfriend, he was beaten up very badly. They used a baseball bat and they actually smashed this young boy's face. And he had extensive injuries and had to have huge plastic surgery and have his whole mouth reconstructed, etc. And what happened was the response afterwards from the different schools, the headmasters and so forth, they, they totally absolved themselves of all responsibility. They were not going to get involved and they said it happened after hours so it had nothing to do with them. But in the meantime, the secular press were having an absolute field time chastising and saying, is this how Christianity works? Is this how Christians treat each other? Um, and then it, it even went so far as a, a little bit of corruption was involved in that all the, the telephone reports and things mysteriously disappeared from the Rosebank police station and it, there was a problem here and the press was just hammering and hammering about the way Christians are treating each other. I got so sad in my heart and just I really felt that I needed to just express um, that this is not how Christians treat each other and they are not behaving like Christians and you know that's just not what Christians do. And so not what the Bible teaches us? Not at all. So I wrote letters, but needless to say they weren't published because people didn't really want to know that side, you know, and I was trying to get across that this is not how Christians behave and this is what a tr true Christian should stand for. Mm. And there's the charity. They should all get in and help. Anyway, to cut a long story short, um, eventually the, the, there was an editor of another publication and he was the only one who was actually standing by and supporting the single mother whose son had had his face bashed, bashed in. And um, he was, again, also quite scathing in his attack on the, on the Christian world. And I think I was just so prompted at this point that we need a voice because where do Christians, true born-again Christians, where do you express what is the Christian opinion to the general public? Because the secular media are not going to help you. That's right. And, and that's where there was this need was birthed within me. And then at that same time, I got invited to a dinner party. And it just so happened that the, the gentleman sitting next to me happened to be one of the owners of a big printing publication house in South Africa. And we started talking and they had published a book of mine that I'd done a few years ago. And he kind of just asked me, 
you know, mentioned it's a pity you didn't get involved with the Joy magazine before it went out of print because they'd actually stopped the print and his company was the company that was printing it. And I said, no, 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 I couldn't do that. You know, my background is IT and me in, not um, media. Anyway, I left it and it was the end of the discussion. That night at about three or four o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I felt exhilarated to say the least and my heart was pounding and suddenly I started thinking about this and it was just the two ideas kind of were meshing together and um, you know, I was really excited and I woke up my husband and we made a decision that you know the next morning we were going to find this man and go and have a chat to him because he just so happened to live in the area where I stay and we did that and he investigated it anyway and after a week or so he came back to say you know that the intellectual property rights were available to the name so we didn't actually take over a magazine at all what we did was we bought the name and the rights to use it because I felt that you know the hardest thing with a magazine is to make known the name and to rebrand something and um, if I had that name with good PR we could be a lot more inclusive so that this represents all the churches and all Christians in South Africa and not only one stream. Hmm. Now we fast track, it's, it's an incredible story that you, you know, you have no background in media, yet God, it's clear that God spoke to you hmm. about taking this assignment, taking this, re, um, you know, resurrecting this, this magazine, Joy magazine, and using it to, to inform and educate Christians all over the country and that's exactly what it's doing now. Hmm. So we fast track 100 editions later. Where to now? What, it, what are the highlights, perhaps, you want to tell us first? Highlights in, in the ministry as you build this up to 100 and we've seen the improvements. And where is God telling you to take this m magazine in the future? Like some of the highlights, you know, we've had some tremendous acts of faith. We've had to really stand hard. Um, there is a battle out there. People are not happy to have Christian magazines oh, yes, out on the absolutely. shelf. They hide them away all the time. You know, we pay a lot of money, the same as any other magazine, to be on the shelf. And we don't deserve to be at the bottom shelf. Absolutely. We deserve to be right there at eye level. And um, unfortunately, that is in the, in the secular stores, that is what happens. If people see the magazine, um, they buy it. Yeah. But if they don't I'm, see it, they don't buy it. I'm just looking at, this is the cover of the 100th edition. And I'm, I'm imagining this on, in Woolworths, in Spa, in Pick and Pay. And it says joy and it says Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. In every um, supermarket shelf right around the country, how huge that is. It's a testimony. It's a declaration of the faith. And it's out there where, where we can't usually get, we've got this magazine cover. And I love your, you know, your Easter magazine covers of the, of the Lord Jesus on the cross and all of that. Every magazine is, is a testimony. It's telling a story. And the fact that it's out there is so great. You know, Errol, it was quite funny because when we were putting this cover together, um, there was something missing and we were tweaking and we were, you know, and it just suddenly came to me, just, just put there, stated as it is, that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that is, to me, could possibly be my greatest legacy, is to, to know that that was on the shelf of every supermarket in South Africa. That is our joy. I know, and I, I know in the past, because we have a relationship now for many, many years, Erin, and many times you face challenges where this magazine was taken off shelves because somebody or the other got offended with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, we're not surprised by that because Jesus said people will be offended. They'll be offended by the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But you persevere. You persevere, but I also, this is why I request, Errol, from the bottom of my heart, I ask Christians to please subscribe to the magazine. You know, there may come a time when no longer the magazine is welcome on the shelves. We don't know. But what I do know is that Christians need this information and it's informative. And I really appreciate and value if they subscribe. We also have programs where we ask churches to just take a bulk subscription. That means 10 magazines, which is a fantastic resource for them to use for visitors or to share amongst the cell leaders or the elders or to actually use when they do hospital visitations. It's an incredible product to leave behind. So, Erin, your vision for the future. What is God saying to you now? This is 100 editions. 
We're looking forward to the next 100 editions of Joy Magazine. Where to now? Well, you know, I think you've interviewed some of them. We've got a young team here as well. And on the digital side, we are moving into different areas. We also obviously have our Afrikaans publication, which is going to grow substantially now in the next year. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of the only patriotic magazines left that stands for strong Christian values. You know, there is trouble in the churches and liberalism has caused a lot of it. And, you know, we will not move off the Bible. But uh, Erin, I want to thank you and uh, Jackie, thank you for being the visionary behind Joy Magazine and Yech Magazine and Joy Digital. You're a dynamic woman of God. You're, you're faithful. Uh, you've been a great friend to Family Policy Institute, to Watchmen on the Wall. We do what we do because of people like you. We know your heart. We know how you sow into the kingdom of God. I think people will be amazed and shocked to know that Erin Giorgio goes out to Lavender Hill and places like this to reach out to gangsters and people do outreach. Um, uh, there's not a lot that people know about you that I know about you. That's why I love and respect you. I love and respect this magazine. And we wish you, Jackie, and the team here to enjoy much success. We believe God is going to bless this magazine. Take it to greater measure because you have been faithful to the call of God on your life. So God bless you. Thank you, Earl. I appreciate it. God bless you too. So I'm talking to Jenna Lee Kellen, who is the editorial assistant to Joy Magazine and also the right-hand person or lady to Jackie Giorgio, who is the managing editor at Joy Magazine. So Jenna, it's a privilege to speak to you. Tell us about the process of putting this magazine together week in and week out, some of the challenges you face and how it all comes together every single edition. Um, well, it is a, it's a team effort, which is great. It's so nice to work together with other people. And um, some of the articles we get from external contributors who are either overseas or local pastors in South Africa. Some of it is advertorials, which we either write ourselves or we help our clients to compile it. Um, so it is a lot of reading and um, we just make sure things are polished up nicely and yeah, easy to read for our readers. One of the things that people don't know is that every Joy magazine goes through a process of securing and procuring the content. It then gets edited by Jenna Lee. <clears throat> it often goes through my mom and myself. It then gets designed with our designers. We then have um, myself uh, read through the editorial, tweak it, not only checking grammar, but also checking uh, that cohesively is getting the message across. And then we have Peter Hammond, who oversees our fact checking and scriptural checking of the articles, because obviously that's very important. Mm. And then it goes through another round of final reads. So every Joy magazine takes at least a month's worth of production to actually compile. It starts off, if you have a look in this format, where initially it's put together as actually a blank file. And then we have um, the articles come in, they get edited, and then they start getting designed. We have a lot of shuffling. As you can see, there's a lot of um, corrections that take place. And Jen will tell you, we're the masters of shuffling here. She comes into work sometimes and the file overnight has changed around. But generally, what, did, what does it feel like to work on the, or have worked on the 100th edition of Joy Magazine? It's a great honor and privilege. It's, it's so nice to see where we've come from, the effort that Jackie and Erin put into the magazine and their heart for it and how it's just grown. And to be part of this 100th issue, it's, it's difficult to explain how, how grateful I am to be part of it. It is fulfilling, Errol, and um, I'm so glad that we've had the opportunity with this show to give people an insight into what goes on at Joy because we work very hard at putting together what we deem to be an excellent product that honors God. That what pumps through the work that we do here, and Jen will back me up on this, is with every article we try and say at the end of it, 
what are some practical steps that I as a Christian can take? Because when I read an article about Christians being beheaded or about the Islamization of Europe or about um, the gay marriage and the legislation around that, you might sit and say, oh, there's nothing I can do. It's just the world's going to pot and there's nothing, uh, you know, prayer doesn't work. No, prayer works incredibly well because that's what moves the hand of God. That's right. But we as Christians need to also know what practical steps we take. And so that's why we are so passionate about the magazine, because we're not here to just entertain you, but it's to really help you live out your Christian walk to be salt and light in society. Amen. That's my message, Jackie, salt and light. We need more Christians to do that. So generally, tell us what is your vision for Joy Magazine? What would you like to see in the next 100 editions of Joy Magazine? I think... Uh but what Jackie was saying, just to see people who are actually standing up for the truth. And so I think for the next hundred issues, for us to just keep fighting the good fight, because it is a good fight of faith, and to get that biblical worldview across, and for people to agree with us and stand up with us, mm -hmm. saying, yes, this is what God's Word says. Yeah, I think generally you summed it up perfectly. It's exactly what the Ministry of Joy magazine is about. It's and we thank God for magazines that are speaking forthrightly, proclaiming the truth of God's word, unashamedly and uncompromisingly. And we need more of this. So thank you. God bless you in your work. Alistair Aron said, it's such a great privilege to speak to you. Yeah, a joy magazine as we celebrate uh, 100 issues of the magazine. You're responsible for design and layout for Joy magazine in particular. I want to talk to you a little bit about the calling of God in your life, because I think most people don't realize that this is a ministry yes. uh, to touch people's lives and to inform and educate people with a biblical worldview. And because it's a ministry, you need a calling to the ministry. Yeah. And so God's called you to this ministry. Tell us about uh, your calling and how you apply it to the ministry of Joy Magazine. Yeah, I've always, since I've started, I always wanted to use the talents that God's given me to use it for design and use it for His purpose to further His kingdom. Yeah. And with Joy Magazine, not coming to work every day, but it's like coming to a family, coming to a ministry, um, and using that um, to further um, the kingdom of God by using my design in, in that way. Mm. Um, it's just waking up every morning, it's a privilege. How, where do you get the inspiration to design the different articles so that it, it has impact and, and tells a story? You know, most of the stories that we get is, is, is testimonies and news articles, like I said, in biblical. And um, by reading the stories, because I get to read them first. And for me, it's like I get this blank canvas, which is the, the layout screen that I work on. And I get to interpret that story mm. in a way that it touches me, relaying it to our audience than we have. So for me, it's all about reading the story and really letting it touch me, because we have some amazing testimonies. And I know that the designs we do um, it gets out there and it helps people, it, it, it saves people, it brings people to God and um, we're pronouncing the, the, the Word of God through all these um, testimonies and all these, the work that we do. Mm. So, yeah. Alistair, we want to thank you for the incredible work you do, for your calling, for your passion and your commitment to this wonderful magazine and for touching so many lives in South Africa. God bless you. Thank you, God bless you. So I'm speaking to Jenny Robinson, who heads up the advertising here at Joy Magazine. And we're here to celebrate 100 edition of Joy Magazine, which is an awesome milestone, Jenny. Absolutely. And, and I've known you for a long time. You're a um, um, part of the furniture here, Joy. You've been That's here right. for a while. And uh, tell us about your journey. Uh, when you started with Joy, some of the challenges you faced and also highlights. Thanks, Errol. Yeah, I've had the privilege to be here from the beginning, mm. from where God called this ministry into being, which is 10 years ago. And it's been a real faith journey for me. I'm the advertising sales manager. I always say I've got the hardest job in the office. Yeah, I think so too. Um, the advertising is what pays for the magazine. But it's been a huge privilege for me. And I think the biggest thing for me has been, you know, when God calls something into being, when we look to him, he makes sure it happens. Absolutely. It's been amazing to see month for month, we're on our 100th issue, and to look back and to see every issue 
of how he's provided. But it talks a lot about the faithfulness of God, it doesn't it? Absolutely. The fact that you've reached the 100th edition, yeah. this is just the grace of God, the goodness of God. That's what it says. Yeah, and to see how it's grown, you know, and just to work for me, the biggest thing has been to work with different ministries across South Africa mm. and to see how God's used them. Um, when you say ministries, when you, you're talking about churches. Churches, all the different ministries, the advertisers that I work with, which range from Bible schools to churches to conferences to um, smaller children's ministries to drug rehabs and just being involved, you know, being able to go in and get a glimpse of what's happening in their ministry. It's a huge privilege yeah. because not many people are exposed to what God's doing right across the country. So, so what you're saying is that everybody that or most of the people that advertising in Joy Magazine, you know them. Absolutely. You know their ministry, yeah. you know their heart. And that's why they're advertising in the magazine. Yeah, it's never been about us just getting the one-page adverts and filling the magazine and moving on to the next issue. Yes. It's been involved in their ministry, seeing what their needs are, seeing what God wants to do through that ministry, and getting involved in that. Mm. And that's been great. So, Jenny, it's such a privilege to speak to you. Thank you for the work you do. It's critical what you do to keep this magazine going. And on the occasion of celebrating 100th edition, Congratulations, may God bless you in the future. Thank you, Errol. Thanks so much. So, Trish, it's such a great pleasure to speak to you. Now, you're one of the longest serving members on staff here at Joy Magazine. Tell us a little bit about how important this ministry is to you. What does it mean to you? Um, when I first applied for the job, well, it isn't a job, it's a ministry, but it was quite amazing because it was just, like God calling me. So I just got the feeling I was meant to be here right from the beginning. It's just not like any other job where you just go, you sit, you do the books, you go home. There's a lot of meaning. You meet a lot of people too, people that come that need help. Like they, we've sent a few off to rehab and things like that when they've needed the help. Absolutely. Now, you know, just Talking about the donations to help, I, I'm going to bring you in here, Debbie, uh, that I think most people are not aware that Joy Magazine donates uh, finances and resources to missionaries and ministries and people in ministry. Tell us about that. Oh, absolutely. This is certainly not just a ministry. It really, this we're a link in the finance business here, obviously, but it is not just a link in bookkeeping. This ministry gives constantly to um, organizations. We sow into a number of places, um, the Gabriella Center, the Night Shelter, into other um, ministries like Frontline Fellowship. And it is and just family. so one and family, yes, <laughs> absolutely, and Family Policy Institute. And it is such a privilege to actually witness that mm. and be actually a part of that. Um, Erin has always taught us here that what you sow, you will reap. And that's exactly what we do here at Joy. So it's a wonderful, wonderful family. So Trish and, and Debbie, thank you so much for the vital role you play in this great ministry called Joy Magazine. Julia Pony, you are the voice and the first face that people see here at Joy Magazine when anybody visits the office. Yes. And you have a remarkable testimony you are an employee that's been with the uh, company for 10 years, yes. as long as the magazine has been in existence. Mm. Tell me what it feels like, or what has been your experience working here at Joy Magazine? It feels so wonderful because you come to work every morning and you getting together with the lovely people that you enjoy be with, to be with during the day. And the wonderful thing about me in the Joy Magazine is because you come here you, it's not like you're coming to a job, you're coming to a ministry, you're coming to get the words of God, and you're coming to get some encouragement to the people that you're working with. Mm. Now, uh, you started as, uh, you didn't start in this position as the administrator, front office man, administrator, what you're doing now. Mm. Tell us your story, how you started and how you got to where you are now. Okay, I started at Joy Magazine from the very first beginning, I think they were on their second issue of the magazine. And then I came in here as a cleaner and a tea girl. I came in here, it was a board. You can ask Erin about it. She normally said to me, Julia is only board now because it's going, to, going, it's going to be busy. And then I started as a cleaner 
and then there was a lady who was, a, who was at a reception, and then the lady stopped working. I don't know why, but Erin take me from the kitchen and the cleaning and put me on this desk and say to me, Julia, this is what you're going to do. And she tried to find, she, she find, actually she found the typing course online because I came here and started to working at Joy Magazine without any experience for typing and stuff like that, working with the computers. But Erin made sure that I know how to type the, the the words and I know how to work the computers. She normally gave me the articles that I must type during the day. And Jackie as well came in and they popped me with the articles that I must type during the day. So that's when I started here at the Joy Magazine. So it's a wonderful journey, Julia. It is a wonderful. For 10 years working, starting as cleaner, as making teas, uh, and then training yourself with the encouragement of Erin. And Erin and Jackie. Uh, and here you that. are. Yeah, you are the face of Joy Magazine and also the voice that people hear when they uh, phone the office. And so tell me, in closing, what, is, what does it mean to you working for Joy Magazine? We're celebrating 100 editions of the magazine. What would you like to see in the future? For me, it means a lot because I came to Cape Town looking for the job, any kind of job, but God didn't want me to do any kind of job. God put me to Joy Magazine. God put me to the ministry that I can grow. Because if God didn't put me in this ministry, I will be somewhere, I don't know what to be doing. And I'm very happy to be in this ministry because I've, I've, been, I've been learning a lot of things that if I was not in the ministry that I wouldn't know about. Mm. So I, I, I'm very happy to be in this ministry. Yeah, and Julia, I, I, you know, I've been visiting this office for many years. Mm. I've seen your growth, and I enjoy your smile and your friendliness when I phone in. So you are a blessing to this ministry, and part of the reason Joy Magazine is such a huge success in South Africa. So God bless you, and continue growing in the Lord. Thank you very much. Hello, you the editorial manager of Jeugd magazine, which means rejoice, right. and very similar to joy, and today we're rejoicing because of the 100th edition of Joy magazine, the company. Now, if we go back, after four years of the launch of Joy magazine, there was a growing interest uh, from the Afrikaans community in South Africa in the magazine and in the articles, the great articles that was in it. And uh, Erin Giorgio, the publisher of Joy Magazine, decided to put some Afrikaans articles in the back of Joy Magazine. Right. But the interest continued to grow. And more and more Afrikaans people was, was needing, you know, articles. And so uh, the vision for Yech was born. And here we are, um, a couple of years later, celebrating both Joy and Yech Magazine. So tell us about the vision and what it means to you. Mm -hmm. The vision, I just want to go back a little bit when Erin um, and her team noticed the interest from the Afrikaans community. They realized that there's a, a hunger for an Afrikaans Christian magazine with content that would speak to a biblical uh, worldview that would address issues specifically pertaining to the Afrikaans Christian community. And um, then they launched Yeg and it immediately uh, found its own niche market um, of people, Afrikaans people, who um, found that it resonated with something within their own hearts. And um, because it, it, it addressed worldviews, as I said, it addressed family values, it addressed Christian values and issues um, in the world around them. And of course, also um, taking from the articles from Joy, articles that would encourage, uplift, and inform Christians, which mm. is our, 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 you know, the Joy vision as well. Mm. So then Yeh extended their vision to um, serve specifically the Afrikaans Christian community. And um, within that, there's always issues of um, your culture, your language. And um, so that we brought in um, history articles, and um, articles on the, the, the history of the Afrikaans language, for instance. Um, and I'm well aware that um, it's not just um, white South Africans that speak Afrikaans. This um, language goes across all the, the um, you know, ethnic groupings. That's right. So there'll be something for everybody in there. And um, 
yeah, so we'd like to unite Afrikaans people around the gospel, around Jesus, and to um, to carry out that that worldview through yeah. our, our message. Now, the, the the testimonies you get back, and you know, people write letters to you. What is, what are people saying about Geich magazine? Um, one that recently really struck a chord in my heart was from a man that um, had to work in Saudi Arabia, as many of the South Africans have to do now. They work outside of the country's mm. borders, his, his own families in South Africa. And um, because it's a, a country where you're not allowed to practice your Christianity openly, um, no church services, no prayer groups, nothing. It, it's a spiritual dry area, really. And his family sends him his Yaich magazines, and he said, we his family there. He reads us cover to cover and it, it comforts him, it encourages him and then he passes it on to the other men there and they read it and it, it, it fills that need um, that a church community I suppose would, would fill for them. Um, another testimony was very interesting, um, a man sat in a doctor's rooms recently and um, our magazine happened to be lying on the counter and um, Aaron's heart is evangelism. If you know her well you will know I do. if if you are not a christian by the when you walk in you will be one by the time you leave her her <laughs> front door so there's always something um with evangelism in it as well and uh, he picked up our magazine and granted that work had been done before but um he read the article and he actually became a christian right there he gave his heart to the lord and then you know you're busy with things that have eternal value what does this magazine mean to you and you know when you hear these testimonies you know, just as, as, as far as serving God and, uh, you know, your destiny and your calling is concerned. Ero, gaan jy omgees ek my, my hartstaal praat? Absolutely not. Ek gaan in Afrikaans praat vir die, Please want do. ons leesers is Afrikaans. Vir my beteken hierdie tydskrif, um, ek het een plek waar ek Godse hart aan sy kinders kan oordra in my moedertaal en in iemand anders in moedertaal. En um, juist in hierdie tydse waar ons nou leef, is het my so belangrik, omdat um, um, ons voel dat ons taal gemarginaliseer word, ons voel miskien dat ons um, in een in een sekere sin moet terugstaan van ons taal af. So, om een publikasie daar te kan stel waarin ek vrylik in my taal kan skryf en um, mense kan aanmoedig om goed lief te hee, mense kan aanmoedig om betrokken te wees in die gemeenskap in Suid-Afrika waar ons woon, um, beteken vir my baie. Um, een van ons eerste artikels wat ek hier gedoen het, was juist oor die geschiedenis van die Franse hiergenote. En dit is, uh, 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 dit is basis waar die Afrikaanse geschiedenis van die um, Afrikaans sprekendes vandaan kom. En dit was, hulle, was christene wat moes vlug omdat hulle vervolg is. En hier is hulle in hierdie land. En ek geloof God het, elkeen van ons wat hier is hier geplant omdat ons het doel hier het. Hmm. So, um, met daar die achtergrond van ons voorzate, um, gaan ons aan met dit. Ons bouw voort op die christelike fondatie en ons is in hierdie land om een deel te wees van Godse plan vir hierdie land. So, in plaas van om in, in te keer en, 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 en om jy jyself te onttrek, hmm. reik ons uit met ons kultuur, met ons taal, in Godse liefde en ons is deel van sy antwoord vir hierdie hmm. nasie. So, Larika, it was a privilege speaking to you. We bless you for the future, for the next hundred editions of Yeich magazine that you grow and that God would use this ministry in increasing me measure and you in particular. God Thank you, you, Errol. Thank you. I'm speaking to Andre and Manette who work particularly on Yeich magazine. And Andre, you responsible for design at Yeich and Manette, you on advertising. Yes, I, it's an honor and privilege for me to work here. I was at home for nine years and I said God will show me the way to, 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 my, job, to my next job. And I've got the job at, at the Yeg magazine and it, it's, it was really a God job. He gave it to me, really. And um, I, I love it. We, we're a huge family here. We're a family. We, we pray together. We pray for each other. We love each other. And, and to see God in everything... God's hand in everything we do, it's amazing. I really, really love it. But so tell us about the advertising. 
Het is baie, baie moeilik om, om advertenties te kry vir, vir het christelike tijdskrif. Sekulare mense daar te wil nie by ons adverteer nie, omdat ons een christen tijdskrif is, en hulle wil hulle nie altyd associeer met een christen tijdskrif nie. Mm. Waar baie christelike, christelike maatskapie en bedienings het die finansies om by ons te adverteer nie. So dit is nie makkelijk nie, en, en op die einde van die dag ons, ons drukkers uh, kost is honderde duisende rande, en so ons moet het betaal, so ons moet Die ad, ons moet advertenties kry en ons moet op die einde van dag salarisse betaal en, en dit is, dit is, so dit is, dit is een ah, moeilike wereld, maar dit is een wonderlijke wereld, want om, om die einde van die dag te sien wat, hoe die heren die pad vir jou oopmaak en hoe die heren jou dieren oopmaak om vir jou te wees die, die persoon moet in die tijdskrif adverteer en dit is net rechtig baie, baie lekker. So Andre, what's the target market for Jeug Magazine? Jeug uh, tijdskrif is so tussen die 30s en die 55s wat meeste mense lees, maar ons um, is 50% vrouwe, 50% um, mans. So dit is een baie spectrum van mense wat het van blad tot blad lees. Want vir ons is het bemoedigend as mense vir ons bid en um, ook subscripties uitneem, want dit is waar ons um, ondersteuning gaan vandaan kry. Dit is um, waar mense um, elke maand kan uitsien na tijdskrif in hulle postbus. So ja, dit is ons mark is vir ons belangrijk. Hmm. So Andre en Manette, thank you for your passion and your commitment to Jeeg Magazine. It's an important tool to the Afrikaans community in South Africa. God bless you for the next 100 edition. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. For Joy Magazine uh, launched uh, Joy Digital, an amazing website with amazing content on it. Tell us a little bit about uh, Joy Digital and its objectives. Um, well, I think with if we just look at um, you know the times that we're living in and and the fact that uh, media plays such an enormous part of our of our daily lives, especially as believers, um, and the fact that there are more than three billion people online, um, we can clearly see that there's there's a real need for um, just for for really good uh, Christian content on an online platform, and um, and that's what we that's what we deliver on Joy Digital. Um, it's something that focuses very much on on what the church is doing right. And, um, you know, focusing on taking the strengths, the, the, the strengths of the church and bringing that to believers and ultimately with the goal of uniting believers by focusing on its strengths, um, but also to promote sound biblical doctrine very much in line with the magazine um, where we seek to educate, to equip and to inform believers of a biblical worldview. We know they're spending 31 hours a week online. So what are they viewing when they're online? And that's really um, where Joy Digital steps in for the gap between Sunday services. So Monday to Saturday, there's phenomenal content to be sourced just to help you with everyday life. Mm. Now, Marina, you're in charge of uh, sourcing content and also design. How do you get the great content that is on the site? How do you manage to source that? Um, Errol, we have chosen a lot of the articles from Joy in the past that's still relevant today um, and just shortened it because people online tend to not read too long articles. Mm. Um, yeah, and then I check out the news every day um, to keep the site fresh and keep breaking news on the site. Um, and we've also got a lot of, a lot of different um, categories. Um, and recently we've launched the Afrikaans news section so they take my news and they just translate it. What are some of the categories that's more popular with the online community? The most popular one is news. Um, with that, there's also burning issues, which is more serious questions like, why does God allow um, tragic happenings in the world? Um, so yeah, that's quite a popular one. And then we've got Everyday Life, which is softer articles. And we've also, also got a youth section. Um, for the younger people. Yeah. What is the average number of hits on the website? Uh, we've got over 35,000 users monthly. Uh, Dominic, so you in charge of marketing? Um, Errol, we have various ways in which we do market uh, Joy, Yech and Joy Digital. Um, I'd just like to touch on the one that we've just recently put emphasis on and that's actually going to the churches to present and tell people more about um, Joy and Joy Digital as well as Yech. And what we do is we, we go there to promote the importance of Christian media as well as encourage people to have a biblical worldview, especially in the day and age and the things happening in the world around us. And then we also have um, quite a large presence on Facebook Facebook as Joy Digital, as well as we also have Joy Travel Facebook page, Joy Magazine and Yech Tate Script. And um, what we do there is we, we 
we take articles from the website and we place it onto our pages and we have quite a large following like I said and so what we try to do is we make it relevant to our target markets and to the demographics and just allow people to read and, and get more clued up about how to react and how to pray for certain situations. So those are our two main areas and we do have other areas where we, we go to certain functions and conferences and events and we have a presence there um, and we're actually quite involved in the youth as well where we go and we have cornhole boards and we just make a, a, a wonderful atmosphere for them um, where they can just enjoy and experience more of what God has for them. Mm. Now Phil, um, the, the Joy Digital website is such an incredible resource for the Christian community in South Africa and internationally as well. How do people um, get access to it and if people want to contribute to the website as far as content is concerned, how do they do that? Um, well, very simply, they can they can start off by visiting joydigitalmag.com. Um, they'll find that at the top of, of the Google search when they just search for Joy Digital. Um, alternatively, once they're on the site, they'll actually find on the homepage, there's a wonderful link at the top, very clear to see how you can actually uh, download the Joy Digital app as well. Um, and that's available on Apple and on Android. And, um, and the, the, the beautiful thing about the app is, first of all, that you can obviously you've got the the content locally on your device then it's um it's not so much you don't have to always wait for the internet connection etc so um and the cool thing about the app is that we really um we're really trying to focus on on building phenomenal relationships with some key players as far as uh, ministry is concerned music uh the youth the youth movement is, a, is is obviously a big thing that that is close to our hearts as well um so the app really gives you that opportunity to have it all in you know in the palm of your hand so to speak and um just an interesting stat that there's you know 5.76 million smartphones that are sold per day um and you know app uh, an app plays a, an enormous part of that we find that 80 percent of the time that people are spending on their on their mobile phones are within apps um so we, we, we build great relationships with ministries and with churches, and we, we're trying to see how we can take hands with them and, um, and provide our believers with, um, with some really cool, relevant content and, um, and some cool you know, things on the side as well. So keep an eye on that, definitely. Yeah, again, I must say that this website, Joy Digital, is an incredible resource tool for Christians. And uh, we want to bless you, Phil and Marina and Dominic, for the incredible work you're doing. And we pray that God will bless and grow this resource tool for the glory of God. Thank you. Thank you. So, Jackie, we've heard so many aspects of Joy and Yech magazine and Joy Digital, and I mean, it's an incredibly exciting ministry, especially in terms of where it's going. But then there's another aspect, which is Joy Travel. So tell us a little bit about Joy Travel. When I first started working at Joy, we did the odd tour to Israel sort of once every two or three years. And we never thought that this would be a particular branch of the ministry because as a primary source, we are a magazine. But what happened is Christians started to express an interest in coming with joy because they love the content, because they know that we do things excellently. And, um, you know, between my mom and myself, we're very hands on and involved in ensuring people have a good experience. And so we have an annual tour to Israel. And I found that a lot of people who have traveled with me to Israel have said, Jackie, where else are we going? And I said, well, there's nowhere else. We're a magazine. That's it. One trip. That's it. And they said, no, we want to travel with joy. And so I started to develop other tours and um, travel opportunities. So we did a biblical cruise to Greece and Turkey a few years ago. And then we did a local cruise with marriage seminars. That's something you'd probably be interested mm. in, where we went from Durban to Mozambique. And that was we had 350 people that came on that cruise. It was a lot of people. That's significant. Yes. And we're going to be doing another one of those with Focus on the Family in 2017. And then we had uh, people that just wanted to take Christian holidays. And so this year I had a cruise that we did to Venice and to Croatia and Istanbul. And we had a pastor on board who offered daily devotions. And then we had about 30 people in total that traveled with joy just to go and see the world together and have fellowship. And, and people enjoy this obviously because they're going with an organization they can trust people they can trust and most importantly that they want to be um, with other Christians. They want to interact and obviously fellowship with other Christians and enjoy 
obviously the joining as well. And with a joy tour, for example, to Israel, there are many ministries and part pastors uh, leading tours to Israel. But with joy, we go the extra mile because I'm, you know me, I'm a perfectionist. Yes. So um, there's all the little touches that we put into the tour to make it special. And we hand select every year a different pastor to lead the tour as we've prayed and asked the Lord, what is the message you want to deliver on this trip? So next year in 2016, I have a church, a, a tour to go see the seven churches of Revelation in Turkey. I have a biblical cruise to Europe, to Barcelona, to Spain, um, to uh, Italy, all over the show. Uh, we also do trips to take people to see Andre Ru in concert. And then my favorite is Israel. I love going to the Middle East. And um, as you know, we've been talking about it. And for the viewers at home, it's something very exciting that we want to do a tour to Israel with Errol Naidu. Yes, amen. Amen. So we're looking at planning that for September next year. And I'm very excited to be able to take you and your team to the Holy Land to experience it. Yeah, we're going to enjoy that. We look forward to that. And Arlene as well. It's going to be our first trip to Israel. And uh, so we, we're really looking forward to that. But now on Israel, a lot of people uh, seem to think that going to Israel is dangerous and you shouldn't go there because all of, you know, of all the conflict and all of that. Is that true? Because I see every year you guys go with a big team and people come back happy and fulfilled and talk about it. So what is the truth? Mm -hmm. Well, those people who read the magazine would know that I do a report back article after every tour. And... Every time I write the article, it's we're talking about what a wonderful time we had and how it was so safe. And it's because the media does create certain impressions that are not accurate. Right. And when you go with a reputable company who have done their research, who work with people on the ground, we will ensure that you're never placed in harm's way. And we know the sites extensively, the times of years that year that you want to go, the, the dates that you don't want to be somewhere. Um, and even with the areas we go to in Turkey or Israel, the tourist areas in those countries are not where the danger sits. And so it's completely safe. I've been to Israel 11 times, I've been to Turkey three times, I've been to um, Europe a couple of times with Joy Travels and we've never had any problems. Absolutely. You know, and I know exactly what you're talking about because Arlene and I were discussing when we're going to go to Israel because we haven't been there yet and we said if we do go, we're going with Joy Magazine because we trust you, we know the excellence and so we'll be very excited that you've uh, selected me to be the pastor on the next tour in 2016. We look forward to it, the guys, the Watchmen on the Wall crew. We're going to be doing some filming over there as well. Yeah. But Jackie, we bless you. Um, you can see God's blessing on this ministry, and on, on the travel ministry mm -hmm. as well, as it grows and goes into other uh, areas and regions. And I think it's a huge blessing to Christians all over this country that can go with a reputable company, like you say, with the research and the knowledge and have that Christian fellowship. Mm -hmm. And one last thing I want to mention, you can find all the information about the tours on our website which is the Joy Digital website. We've got a whole directory of Joy Travel, all the itinerary and the programs. And um, one of the things that we're busy working on, which is quite exciting, is to also develop the local tours and travel because not everyone can afford to go overseas. It is expensive uh, with our exchange rate, but we've got local trips and we've even got a singles cruise that we're planning for 2017 with Focus on the Family, where we're going to give Christian singles an opportunity in a classy and a a very contained environment to meet other men and women who could possibly be their life partner. You don't know. Mm. So. Brilliant. We look forward to the new ventures and we bless you, Jackie, um, with uh, all your plans. Thank you. That's our show for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. We value your comments and suggestions for the show. So please write to us at info at familypolicyinstitute.com. Please visit our website at familypolicyinstitute.com and subscribe to my weekly newsletter. This is my primary method of sharing critical information concerning faith, family and religious freedoms in South Africa. You can also join our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Remember, the latest edition of Joy and Yeich magazines are available at retail stores across the country. Make sure you get your copy. Thank you for joining us tonight. God bless you and remember, keep standing.